okay. without, you know, that a ceiling it was at that time. Allah said to Ibrahim, O oh Ibrahim, now call people in order to visit the Kaaba and make their Hajj too. Ibrahim said, Ya Allah, and my voice will not reach every place. It is limited. Allah said to him, you have to call and it is we who have to carry and to convey your voice to every heart whom Allah has predestined to make the Hajj. And here you are and here we are. Sometimes a person is sitting, it comes to his mind to make Hajj. It is the call that has reached him of Ibrahim. My dear Muslims, the Kaaba and the visit of the Kaaba is a spiritual journey. It is not only a physical one. And as we see here, it is not like only going around the Kaaba. The meaning of going around the Kaaba is that we focus our intentions upon our goals to please Allah. And after that, when going around the Kaaba and then visiting all the places and the sacred places that our Prophet did, it is a must upon us to remember that these places were sacred and these places were visited before by our Prophet Muhammad. Allah made them sacred and when goes, when a person goes there, he feels that. It is a moral, a physical, a spiritual visit indeed to the Kaaba. And whenever we all go to all the stations of the Hajj, we remember then how great was our Prophet وسلم, who could change that land to be the only place that called for the unity of God. May Allah bless you all and give you all the chance to visit these places morally and spiritually. When going around the Kaaba, you focus upon your goal to make Allah your intention in your praise, in your Hajj, giving zakah, and in all in all the stations that we do on earth. And after that, inshallah, when you go there, and may Allah enable everybody of you to go there, and uh, those who have gone has tasted the sweetness of uh, these places, and how to remember how great was Allah, and how great we say great, he is the greatest. And how great was our Prophet Muhammad who carries that among people who was illiterate mostly. And then coming back to convey that feeling, spiritual feeling, to convey that to the people who would listen just as now you are meeting in order to talk about this great issue and listen to one of our brothers also who has stated the sweetness of Al-Hajj and may Allah enable those also to make it again although the more you make the Hajj the more you are elevated and the more you are elevated the more you see more if you are in a building 100 or more, those who are at the first floor cannot see the scenery as those who are at the 20th floor or those who are at the 50th floor. The more you are elevated, the more you feel the sweetness of Al-Hajj. 
May Allah bless you all. And may Allah enable us also, we enable us in order to make this trip and this journey to Al Kaaba. May Allah bless you again. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi. And may Allah bless those who have arranged for this meeting also. Amen. Jazakallah khair. Sheikh, may Allah give him a long life and good health so he can be among us for a long time to come, inshallah. Now I'm going to invite our Imam, uh, Sheikh Omar Baloch. He has uh, a lot of material, a lot of knowledge, but I will ask, uh, request him to limit it for to five minutes, inshallah. He has prepared it, but inshallah you will uh, benefit uh, from his knowledge. Ahmaduhu wa usalli, ahmaduhu wa usalli ala rasul al-kareem, amma ba'd. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yasir li amri wa ahlul uqdatan min lisani yafkaru qawli. اللهم أرنا الحق حقا ورزقنا الطباء وأرنا الباطل باطلا ورزقنا اجتنابا I want to focus on a specific facet of Hajj and this would be very interesting for our sisters especially what I'm about to say and that is how do you have an intimate conversation because when we look at the legacy of Ibrahim, there, there, you know, the conversation that this old man, he's more than a hundred years old, Ibrahim and his son, he's in his teen years. And Ibrahim is having this very intimate conversation with his son. We generally talk about the generation gap, that if your parents belong to one generation, you belong to another generation. There's, a, there's going to be a gap of communication, which is understood. But how do you create an intimate, intimate conversation? Let's first understand that, and then we will look at the conversation that Ibrahim had with his son, and you'll see what an, int, what an example of a father-son intimate relationship. Over here you have the father telling the son that he had a dream. In Yusuf, والسلام, you have Yusuf telling his father that he had a dream. So it starts with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, by the way, let me tell you something about intimate conversation. And this is for parents to know about your kids. Intimate conversations are one-on-one. -on -one. Sometimes we think like, oh, I'm going to take my family to a vacation. And if you take all three of your kids or all two of your kids, that that journey is going to create a bond between you two. That's not what really creates a bond. An intimate conversation, whether husband or wife, or parent and child, an intimate conversation is always one-on-one. -on -one. It's always one-on-one. -on -one. So in other words, when you have a conversation with your son, one-on-one, -on -one, it's going to be very different from the conversation you have with your daughter, one-on-one. -on -one. Sometimes we you know, in, in the world that we are, in the world of fast food, right? Just do everything quickly. We like to bunch everyone together and say, okay, we, you know, we did it for all of you together. It doesn't work like that. Intimate conversations are one-on-one. -on -one. Second point about intimate conversation, and then we'll study the verse of the Quran from the perspective of intimate conversation. When you have an intimate conversation, when you approach your husband, when you approach your wife, when you approach your child, the point of an intimate conversation is not to tell them they are right or wrong. It is not to talk about chores. It's not to talk about bills. It's not to talk about anything material around you. It's to talk about something inside. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, and notice here the conversation between a father and a son. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so when, you know, Ibrahim has prayed forever, right? He prayed for a long time to have this son. 
This is why he's called Ismail, means Allah heard him. Allah heard his prayers, but after a very long time. And Allah says, فَلَمَّا بَلَغَ السَّعْيَةِ When he reached an age where he can move around and do things. Right? He became قُرَّةُ ain for him. He became an apple of his eye. He's doing things. At that time, an intimate conversation takes place between a father and a son. Ibrahim says to his son, Ismail, he says, <clears throat> he said, Oh my son, I saw a dream. Now, what is being mentioned here is he's sharing something. He's doing what? He could have said, I had a dream, I have to do this. Right? And the son could have said, You saw this dream, you're crazy. But what is an intimate conversation you're sharing? The idea is to share. You're not judging. When somebody says to you, I'm tired, when your wife says to you, I'm tired, or your child says, I don't feel like doing my homework, or somebody says, I feel upset with you, the idea is not to judge them, not to be sarcastic, not to make fun of them, but to put yourself in their place. And so Ibrahim says something and Ismail responds by putting himself in his father's place. So the conversation goes like this. Allah says, فَلَمَّا بَلَغَ مَعَهُ السَّعْيَ قَالَ يَا بُنَيَّ إِنِّي رَآ فِي الْمَنَامِ إِنِّي أَذْبَهُكَ He said, I see in a dream. He's sharing. I see. He, Ibrahim is, is asking the opinion of his 13-year-old child. I see myself that I am doing zabiha to you. I'm, I'm sacrificing you. He's sharing something. He could have, and then what he says, Fanzur maza tara? What do you think? What is your opinion about this? What is your opinion about this? He's asking his son, what is your opinion about this? And the son knows the father doesn't want to do this. This is why he's asking him. He's, 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 he's fearing the worst. So if Ismail also says to him, Ya abati, if al don't worry about, I'll be patient. You just do what you got to do. I'll be patient. Don't worry about what will happen to me. So the conversation here between the father and the son is a perfect example of an intimate conversation because they're both talking about their feelings. They're talking about something inside them. Ibrahim had a dream. He's sharing it with his son. His son is not throwing him off or putting him down or being sarcastic. He's saying, Ya abati if al insha'Allah min as My dad, don't worry. I'll be patient. I'm not going to hold you against what you saw in your dream. I'm not going to hold it against you. I understand where you're coming from. And so, what is the point I'm trying to make here? You know, of course, I have only five minutes to discuss a very uh, difficult topic, which is an intimate conversation. So what is an intimate conversation? An intimate conversation is when you talk to someone about your inner feelings without being judged. Your wife says to you, I didn't like you to do this. Or your son says, Dad, you're not being fair. You don't come out and say, you were wrong, you're wrong, or prove yourself right. It's not about who's right and who's wrong. And by the way, one last thing I want to share with you, extremely important, listen to this. Uh, I like sharing this with everyone because I think it's very helpful for any relationship. Kids see themselves playing in a playground. You see kids playing in a playground, Your own, our own kids, we see this with our own kids. Kids are playing in a playground, they start fighting. And then five minutes later, they're playing again. Why? Why can't adults do that? Because adults get stuck on who's right and who's wrong. I'm right, and you're wrong. And she says, or the child says, parents are wrong. Everyone is, you know, it becomes an issue of right and wrong. Children play again because they just choose to be happy. Can you just not fight? and have an intimate conversation and choose not, just choose to be happy. Just like two kids that fight and they forget they fought because they choose to be happy. Sometimes when it comes to our kids, our spouses, our relationships, our parents, we get too stuck on what's right and what's wrong, what's fair and not fair. Choose to be happy and you'll be happy. It makes life a lot easier. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum.
Jazakallah khair. I had promised that it will be good and alhamdulillah it was very thought provoking. Uh, his lectures are very, uh, very informative. So now is the time that we all have been waiting for. So now we're going to invite the Hujjaj and this year because we're going to do it a little different. We used to do it only the people who had made the Hajj. But this year we are going to invite um, a couple other people who have performed Hajj in the past to experience their uh, and Imran Shaukat is raising his hand. So, <laughs> yeah, his number will come inshallah. But we're going to invite uh, the person who just performed Hajj, uh, Brother Ijaz Sheikh. He has written uh, a long story that he's going to share with you. But don't be scared, he's going to do it so fast that you will hardly notice. Brother. He does. So he performed Hajj, may Allah accept his Hajj and may Allah make him a better person after he has made the Hajj and give him more chances to perform it. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. Thank you for honoring me as a haji. Our masjid never forgets to arrange this kind of hujaj reception event every year. Even there is just one haji. I thank you. I thank you, uh, the ma management of the masjid especially Dr. Rehan and all the other folks who were in the team. To say something about the Hajj experience, I simply say that it was an unbelievable experience for me. Alhamdulillah, I completed all my ahkamat with a lot of ease by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Someone there was talking to me and he told me, that there are 6.5 billion people in the world. Out of 6.5 billion people, around 25% are Muslims. And every year, out of 1.6 billion Muslims, only 30 to 40 lakh people get a chance to perform Hajj. And this year, there were only 20 lakh people who performed Hajj because of the concession of Haram. So there, those who go, Go there are the chosen one by the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I prayed all of you, uh, for, for all of you, and uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept and approve all of my duas. Uh, if someone has, uh, I mean, some, some of you has not completed Hajj, uh, this is very important. Uh, Rukun of Islam yet, please plan next year and uh, offer to Nawafil and uh, make a niya and pray and request Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he will remove all hurdles and you will be there next year inshallah. There is one more thing that I have uh, saved some stones. So if you think that we can use them here. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I have, you know. So if you think that we can use someone here, you know, you can let me know. I thank you again for all of you. Thank you. Those stones are for shayateen. If you see one, you can use them. Now I get to um, uh, embarrass some people. And Imran Shaukat is on top of that. So inshallah, Dr. Shaukat. Come on, and he has performed several Umrahs, and his first Umrah was uh, inspired by our masjid. Uh, that's when he went there, he saw, and after that he has visited there several times. The purpose of this is to get the first-hand experience of the people and get there from their original words, in their own words. as uh, First of all, uh, I want to congratulate 
Ajaz Bhai. It's a big thing that you've done this year. And it really is a very huge life-changing experience. It's very hard to explain. But once you get into it and you get there and then you come back, it does definitely change you and your life. I think everybody here in the U.S. should be able to perform Hajj. It is prescribed for people who can afford it. And anybody sitting in this room, I'm, I'm pretty sure that more than 90% of them should be able to go there. And I think they should make an effort. And believe me, it does change a person's life. It is worth taking um, this trip. It is prescribed by Allah for you. It has been, he's, he's commanded you that if you have the the means and ways to do this, then you should. And again, like, you know, if you don't do it, there's also like uh, um, uh, questioning that you can, you can face, um, that why did you not do it? But um, Alhamdulillah, um, when me and my wife, we made the decision, we went for Umrah that year, and that was unexpected through the masjid. Uh, you know, we, uh, we, we uh, it was the same year we did Hajj, we did Umrah just four months before that. So it, it did um, uh, change a lot of things for us in Hajj. But um, Alhamdulillah, after that, we've been there after uh, every couple of years, and it does, um, it does keep, you contend, I don't know, it's very hard to describe uh, the feeling when you go there and then come back. And I think, uh, like, you know, everybody should make an effort. And again, Ajazbhai, I'm, I'm very, um, uh, I want to congratulate you. And I hope next year, Mateen Bhai and Adil, they're, tr they're considering that, and hopefully they will make it. And I wish them the best of luck. Zakullah uh, Khair, very well said. Uh, now I'm gonna uh, get to embarrass uh, one other uh, friend of ours. Uh, he's not even looking this way. <laughs> and his name is Bakar. Come on, come on in. Uh, he was that way when he he had performed as that year. He didn't want to talk either. Nothing changed. Nothing changed. Exactly. All right. In your own words. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. So people say I need to go back there again because nothing has changed. <laughs> um, guys, the experience I had when I went there, basically when I was looking at Kaaba. Um, all the duas and everything I was um, prepared to say in front of the Kaaba, believe me, I just forgot everything. And I was just looking at the Kaaba and the tears were pouring out of me. Um, the experience I mean, I cannot, I cannot explain it to you guys. It's, it's, it's basically when you guys get there, you will, you will understand. And I'm sure everyone who has been there, they do know what I'm talking about. Um, lots of tests, basically, and um, and I'll tell you about Mina. Um, me and my wife we went for stoning, and we said, you know what? It's very easy to come back. And um, we looked at the white tent. Yeah, that's it. We're going to come back right here. So when we were coming back from the stoning, we looked back and there were white tents all over the place. And it took us five hours to get back. And this was our test. Of course, I don't have hair. And uh, the sun was shining right on me. <laughs> Um, may Allah give Tawfiq to everyone to go perform Hajj. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Jazakallah khair. You said uh, you couldn't speak. It was very good. Now this is from the heart. This is, uh, I don't know what you guys feel, but this is the best part. 
because you get the original words from everyone. This is better than uh, you have 10 speakers uh, say. Uh, when I was there in front of Kaaba, the feeling you have, you have to be there to experience that. You are in awe. The first time you seek Hanukkah right in front of your eyes, that it's right there. For years you have been watching on the TV, in the news, in the pictures. Now you are there, you are part of the, that feeling. It's worth all the effort, all the hardship that you go through. All, and you believe, believe me, you forget your family, you forget your children, you forget everybody when you are there. The, all the worries are there when you are planning. But once you start the journey, inshallah, Allah will make it easy. And may Allah give hidayah to each and every uh, able-bodied Muslim to go there and perform this. And we are lucky that some of the countries, they have quota system. They want to go, but their number doesn't come. And subhanAllah, a lot of people leave this world without having their, that wish fulfilled. Now we started this Pajaj reception, I think it was 2006 even uh, before we started Masjid. And our very first Fajaj reception, we, have a, we had a very power, very uh, successful program. And Wes was one of uh, the persons who had performed Hajj uh, then. I'm gonna invite Wes to say a few words, inshallah. Uh, The good thing is, I don't have to limit them. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Yes, I remember that uh, it was 2006. Uh, um, amazing thing about Hajj, uh, of course, is, uh, you know, uh, like everyone else has said, that it's very hard to put in words. But in uh, with me, Alhamdulillah, you know, the first time you uh, see Khan and Kaaba, of course, you make dua, you go to Madina Sharif, you your salam, uh, then you come home, you you think that, you know, your heart now is content uh, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, doing the, the fard that, you know, one is supposed to do, but then, uh, then there's this thing that happens to you that you want to go again, and that feeling actually, uh, and you think, say, okay, inshallah, I'll go one more time and uh, make maybe umrah and I'll be okay. Then you go a second time to do Umrah and then you feel that this is it now, inshallah, I'll be okay. But this thing does not go away. It continues to come back to you and every single time uh, you, you stand in front of Kaaba, you realize that, you know, you made niyat ki ya Allah, now that I'm like a newly uh, born baby, inshallah, I will not commit any, 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 any guna. But you, here you are standing in front of Kaaba with more gunas that you had than in the past. And Allah still forgives you. Allah still calls you. So Alhamdulillah, you know, uh, one thing that Brother uh, Izzaz said, and I think it's an amazing, interesting thing that, you know, if you're intending to make Hajj, uh, make Turagat Nawafil, uh, and keep saying Labbaik. Uh, even if you don't make Hajj, inshallah, you'll get Sawa of Hajj. And I'd like to uh, share a small story about miracles of Hajj. Uh, uh, Allah had blessed me, Alhamdulillah, uh, to make Hajj with my parents. So one time uh, was me and my parents. We were going uh, went for Hajj. And the first day of village Mina, on the second day, the day of Arafah, which is the most important day of Hajj, uh, we left right after Fajr. And uh, while we were uh, going to Arafah, our bus stopped uh, in the middle of highway. Uh, there were like 50 or 60 people on the bus and there are thousands of other bus going back. We were trying to stop at the bus so that you know they can take us with them but they would not do that. Nobody had you know uh, patience to do that and we all were making duas and literally on the uh, on the highway very next to the highway there was an old school bus that was sitting there according to the people over there for years and years, nobody had ever used that bus because it was, uh, you know, not in that shape. Our driver went there, tried to work on that bus, and Alhamdulillah, the bus came on, 
and we were able to jump in and all 50 people used that bus, completely dusty, and we were able to go to Arafat, alhamdulillah, and were able to finish uh, Hajj. So, you know, may Allah actually uh, call all of us over and over to make Hajj and Umrah, inshallah. And I'm going to end up with saying, Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik, Labbaik ala sharika laka Labbaik, Inna alhamda wa na'amata laka wal mulk, la sharika laka. Assalamu alaikum. Now, one person who may not come, uh, his brother Nadim, he went there with his mother. Want to say a few words? Just, hmm? He said he's fine. Uh, all right, uh, brother Minto, inshallah, in very few words. The first time I went to uh, for Umrah, and I, when I visited the, um, I wanted to enter the Kaaba, Harm Sharif, and I looked at the uh, the, uh, the structure, and I was uh, so much uh, uh, awestruck. My legs were shivering, and uh, I couldn't move. This was a very humbling experience. In, it took me a long while before I understood where I'm standing. And uh, then I made an effort and moved towards it. And when I got there, I sat down and it was a, I, I, I cannot believe how, how uh, I cannot put in words the experience I had. Anyhow, we, I, we, I performed the, uh, the um, Omrah and uh, prayed and um, it, it, it brought a, a kind of a scoon to my heart, in my heart and my mind. I, I couldn't think of anything else except that I am there in front of God in his, his house and uh, it's a very humbling experience. And when I went to to Medina, again, the, the, the atmosphere there is such that you do not have any worry, you do not, do not think of anything else. It's so peaceful, it's so, uh, so rewarding experience that you can never forget it. It's very difficult to explain it, put it into words like everybody else said. But uh, um, I wish I will, I'm able to go again and again. And I pray for everybody that they are able to make an effort to go for Hajj. Assalamu alaikum. Jazakallah khair, Brother Minto. This is a. Uh, these are the stories that you want to hear over and over. And this is our family. This is our family. This is our family get together. I don't know what uh, other people are, but this is, uh, I, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else than in this gathering. We have one more eloquent speaker, and inshallah, after that, we will start uh, dinner. And after he's done with his lecture, inshallah, he will make dua for the people, uh, the person who has made Hajj and the people who want to make Hajj and for the entire community, inshallah. Brother Makbul Patel. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Rabbil Samawati wa Rabbil Azri Rabbil Alameen. وله الكبرياء في السماوات والأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد 
اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك أحد مجيد اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك وصل على المؤمنين والمؤمنات وعلى المسلمين والمسلمات I'll be very brief in Sharda I know that everybody is hungry waiting for the food <coughs> but Hujjahs that have returned after performing their hajj they have already said that there is nothing like it. See, in fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, not a very easy thing to read. وَلِلَّهِ عَلَى النَّاسِ حِجُّ الْبَيْنِ This is mandated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that performing hajj is the duty that we owe to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Performing Hajj is the duty that we owe to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see, when Ibrahim alayhi salam and Ismail alayhi salam completed Hajj, Shaykh has mentioned earlier, he asked Ibrahim alayhi salam, call the people to perform Hajj. So Ibrahim alayhi salam looked around and he said he was there. His son Ismail alayhi salam, he was there. His wife Hajra alayhi salam, she was there. And the small community that settled in Makkah, they were all there. So he said, who do I call? So Ibrahim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions to him, O oh Ibrahim, your job is to make a call. And it is my job to bring the people to visit the Haram. This was not done last year. This was in 4,000 years ago. And since then, there has been not a single interruption. For 4,000 years, people are going to Haram saying, Labbay, Allahumma Labbay. Labbay kala sharika la 4,000 years. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam explained in a hadith that with this, when this call was made, it is not only the people until Yawm Qiyamah has responded, but everything that we see on the right side and the left side, and he's talking about the green vegetation, the stones or the rocks, everyone said, Labbaik, Allahumma Labbaik. So those who have not performed the Hajj understand one thing. The only condition that Allah Rasulullah has explained is, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentioned in the Quran is, that person has to be physically fit and they can financially afford it, they have to perform Hajj. There is no escape from it. And let me share one actual story. When I performed my first Hajj in 1981, I, cannot, I can still not understand what has happened there. We were actually approaching the bus to ride the bus to go to Mina. You know how the Muslims are. As soon as the bus doors are open, everybody would jump into the bus. There was no line, now. this is 81 now. Probably they are better organized now. So what we saw is, before I actually can think about riding the bus, I saw uh, about 85 or 90 years old person who could not even stand straight. He was actually in his back. So when I saw him, I thought that I would help him to, to you know, go onto the bus with me. But at least 15 buses passed. And we were still waiting that, you know, we can get onto the bus in some organized manner. So finally, actually, I decided I cannot really help him. And I actually took my own chash, I got into the rush, and I actually stepped up into the bus. I went to the middle of the bus, and before I take my seat, he was sitting right next to me. I cannot understand this. But this was the lesson that I have learned from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That he takes the responsibility. You don't worry about it. It is him who actually brought him. I don't know where he came from. It is like a miracle to me. 
To date, I could not really understand that how did he get on the bus. But he was sitting on the bus before I sat on the next one. So I think, you know, with that, I would say that if we have not performed the Hajj, we should really perform the Hajj. And I think people are already putting the food onto the table. And the good thing is, Dr. Khan actually did not limit me with five minutes. So I can go ahead and speak, you know, make another 40, 45 minutes, I can, you know, keep on talking. But I think the best thing to do is, let's make a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That, if, you know, for those, you see, when I was a child, and this is in Urdu, if you know the Hamd read by, Hamd and Sana, read by Qasmi brother, I was only, you know, seven, eight years old. That's where I heard this from Qasim, you know. Kaabe pe padi jab, pehli nazar, kya cheez hai dunya bol gaya. This is the reaction when you are standing before Kaaba. Once you see it, you'll forget what this life is. And this comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the miraculous actually experience that everybody must experience. Allahumma salli ala muhammadin abdika wa rasulik wa salli ala al-mu'minina wa al-mu'minati wa ala al-muslimina wa al-muslimat. Allahumma rabbana amanna fakhfir lana wa rahamna wa anta khairul rahimin. اللهم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم ربنا أفرغ علينا الصبر وثبت أقدامنا وانسونا للقوم الكافرين اللهم ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب اللهم ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وهئيلنا من أمرنا رشدا اللهم أحسن عقبتنا في الأمور كلها واجرنا من خز الدنيا عذاب الآخرة آمين يا رب العالمين سبحان ربك رب العزة يما يسفون والسلام للمسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين and we must never forget to commend this community and Dr. Khan for arranging this kind of session year after year الحمد لله رب العالمين إذا كنت أخير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Zagullah Khair, I did not limit you because it was your proposal to limit the speakers to five minutes. So, <laughs> I thought you will honor, alhamdulillah. Uh, Zagullah Khair, uh, uh, as I said, eloquent speaker. And alhamdulillah, we heard from the hearts of uh, the people who have performed Hajj in the past. And inshallah, may Allah give us uh, hidayah and tawfiq that we continue this program uh, year after year. And this program, um, could not have been made possible without the help of the events committee and especially uh, Brother Raju and Brother Parvez uh, came two hours before the start of the program to make sure that everything was in place. May Allah bless them, may Allah bless all the members of the uh, events committee and may Allah bless all the members of the Shura Council uh, of this masjid. May Allah bless our masjid, keep our community together and help us grow as good Muslims as brothers and sisters, as a part of a bigger family that keeps growing. And Allah has His special mercy on the Ummah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu No matter how bigger your building is, you will always outgrow. May Allah bless this community. Ameen. Ameen. And is the food ready? So give, give five minutes. Give, give them five minutes to arrange all the trays before we start the food. Jazakumullah khair. We have uh, plenty of food, inshallah. We will have some leftovers uh, and we also have teas. But they are arranging the tables. Just give them a few minutes uh, before we can start the food. Jazakumullah khair. Zoom, zoom, hurry. Zoom, tell it. It's great, it's great.
कार्ड है दो एक एक ऐसा कार्ड है मिलियन सात सौ